Tinubu said he won't leave politics until Atiku becomes president of Nigeria. Ejofo Onya. The argument that ensued between Atiku Abubakar and Bola Tinubu recently prompted Arise News to invite Ejofo Onya, one of the founding members of Action Congress, to clarify some of the issues that were raised in the argument. In the argument between the two presidential candidates, Tinubu said when Obasanjo exiled Atiku from PDP, he was given a platform in AC to support his ambition in the 2007 election. Tinubu also said that Atiku is not among those that formed AC. He also said that Atiku offered him the vice presidential slot in 2007, regardless of his religious beliefs. In reaction to what Tinubu had earlier said, Atiku said Tinubu's statement shows his memory is no longer the way they used to be. Atiku also cited multiple sources to show that Tinubu was the architect of the Muslim Muslim ticket in 2007. Ejofo Onya was asked to confirm if Atiku Abubakar was part of those that formed the Action Congress. He said after Atiku Abubakar had a fallout with the Basanjo, his faction of the PDP formed what was called Advanced Congress of Democrats, ACD. He said after ADC, ADC was formed, Bolatinbu and his group came to them to form a merger because their faction of AD wanted to leave. Ijofo Onya said after a series of discussions, Action Congress was formed. He said it is not correct to say Atiku Abubaka is not part of those that formed AC because he was a leading person in the formation of ACD. Ijofo said after AC's convention in Lagos, Tinubu was not happy because he wasn't offered the vice presidential slot, so he left them at the convention ground. Close to the end of the interview, Ruben Abati asked Ijofo Onya who the better candidate is between Tinubu and Atiku and who will be who he will be supporting and voting for in the 2023 election. In response to that question, Ejofo said, I remember Bola Tinubu telling me personally that he made a promise to our late leader, Sheho Musa Yaradua, that he will not leave politics until he has seen Atiku Abubakar ascend the position of the president of Nigeria. He told me personally. Therefore, from what I know of both of them at this time, I believe Atiku Abubakar has what it takes now to bring this country together and brings us back to the path of development and reconciliation. This is my opinion, and I think he has what it takes to do that now. I mean, it was going well into that last part. At the end of the day, he was only called in this Ejiofo Onya to give his opinion about the recent argument that ensued between Palatinubu and Atiku Abubaka. Well, that which Tinubu told him is probably the, as, as much as there are other big parts and very fundamental, strong influences in this story, the fact is, this man coming to say that Tinubu told him personally that he had a, com- that Tinubu had a conversation with Yaradua, and Tinubu told Yaradua that he would not leave politics until Atiku ascends, well, the seat of the president of Nigeria, which is very shocking because, you know, obviously we never know what is going on behind the scenes, but they will be seen to be competitors. I mean, again, EPC and PDP have been competing for so long and they are like the most influential and well-known political party in, in the country, to be honest. I mean, some people may only even think that there are only two parties in Nigeria, which is the PDP and the EPC, but that is very shocking. Um, and the formation of the, the, the Muslim Muslim ticket may be a tactic. Maybe Tinubu doesn't actually want to win. And maybe it's just a thing whereby, you know, he's, again, with the promise made to Yaradua, I mean, who are we to say if that promise or if that conversation, I mean, we were not there. Again, this is just hearsay by this man. But again, you know, how do we know that, again, Tinubu facilitating this Muslim Muslim ticket would intentionally be him trying to ruin his chances so Atiku would win? I mean, there have been very. I mean, there have been various rumors stating that APC and PDP are basically one in the same because they have the same ideologies. I mean, they are they are competitors. They seem to be apart in terms of just the name and what they represent. But 
they've been in power and they've basically done the same thing. They might as well just be one party at this point. But that is just for everyone else to speculate. You never really know, right? Well, I guess. Elder Onya, if you are waiting for Atiku to be president before you quit politics, sir, you'll be in politics your life. <laughs> An average bewitched Nigerian wouldn't want to hear this kind of blunt truth. Atiku Okoa will calm the tension in the land. Only the matured minds will understand. Well, what specifically about the matured minds are you saying? I mean, again, it depends on where the votes are coming from. Are the votes coming from the matured mind that you say or the average bewitched Nigerian? People need to be careful of the words that they use. Um, but then explain, why do you think Atiku Okoa would calm the tension in the land? Onya Ejofor, a.k.a. Drunkard, how many Atiku thief paid you for this desperate propaganda? Hmm. Good one. I believe Tinubu will not remember again what Mr. Ejofor said. I mean... <laughs> if Tribu comes out to admit, I mean, we never really know. Again, it, for the best of situations or for the best outcome, it, it may just be that Tinubu would just not align and he would just deny, 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 or not even respond at all and pretend that this interview did not exist. Uh, this is past. Igbo man, please, what is all this? Is this what you want to gain from your write up? Okay. These two thieves are, begging, are busy dragging power. It's not unexpected. Um, but then again, we just have to be careful because whatever is given to us in the media, what they portray themselves to be like, I mean, again, it, people are just looking at possibilities of how the outcome of the elections would be. But again, you can't take whatever is given to you in face value. They may appear and portray themselves to be competitors. Maybe they're working behind the scenes. You never really know. This is politics. Now, not just politics, but politics in a country that there is no standard. There is no regulation for anything. Even even walking on the street or whatever transaction you want to do. To the, even if you want to buy a suite. There is no regulation on that transaction in itself. Let alone you come to the pres the presidential elections again. You never really know. So then pol playing politics in a country that promotes impunity, that really, to be honest, has, has no parameters, has no standards, has no boundaries. It, it means the game can be as dirty as it, as, as, it, as it can be, to be honest. So there's really no limit as to the potential or how low, you know, presidential candidates may be willing to go just to get there. But again, that is why tactfully... Peter Obi said in his interview that he's not desperate to be president, but desperate to see a Nigeria that works. And I think that's one of, I mean, personally for me, one of the best, best tactical lines that really, that really served, that really served all the plates for, for the, for the people to eat, for whoever to eat, to eat. I think that was very smart. So yeah, it's not desperation to be president, but to work for the people. Probably think and don't forget to like and subscribe.